What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, True Champion Steven, and I just got done playing a online local with D Brigade. Uh, this is BT9 format. D Brigade's been a deck that I've been wanting to try out ever since I saw topping lists from Gen Con and a bunch of friends were telling me about it. So I just finally decided to bite the bullet, build it and play it. I channeled my inner cyborg from Teen Titans and we just went X1. Overall, I can say the deck is really cool. It's very low to the ground, very consistent. It just wants to attack as soon as possible and get advantage off of the powerful Command Dramons and try to set up for really powerful late game swings with Dark Dramon. And it kind of relies on its big blowout option cards to come back in the game slash heavy punish the opponent if they play into them. It's kind of nice actually playing this super consistent rookie base deck in what feels like a combo OTK build big stack format. So it definitely feels like a dark horse, a deck maybe not every single person is on. Uh, so hopefully me talking about it and playing it today will uh, put you on it if you want to try it for yourself. If you guys like this and like what I do here on the channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. If this is like your second or third time watching one of my videos, that's the universe telling you you should watch more and make sure you don't miss out by clicking that subscribe button. Also follow me over here on Twitch if you ever want to see me use these decks live and in person. All right, with that said, let's hop into the card by card, starting with, as always, the A. We have four copies of BT6 Pagumon for black and one copy of BT2 Sumemon. Uh, honestly, the Sumemon felt more like a hindrance than a help, but because you have so many rookies and you want to make sure you have as much free value as possible, having that fifth egg is super important. I might replace this though with Missimon instead. But Pagumon being like an extra way to free replace anything that dies during your opponent's turn or your turn is just super nice for maintaining aggressive card tempo. From there, we have the main meat of the deck our rookies specifically are 16 copies of Commandramon. Uh, I have not played a D Brigade deck since BT5, but it's nice to see these ratios never changing. Uh, you have the best Commandramon as the rare one, which on deletion potentially lets you replace it on board, basically a, a tutor or a filter like Mystic Tomato or something from Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, we have two four drop Commandramons. This one's a blocker, which can come up to help you not die against your opponent and get that last turn of swinging that you need to win. And this one is 5k base, which did come up today against a Shine Greymon player, requiring two Tamers to kill these instead of one is really pog. And then we have four vanilla Commandramon two drops. Uh, we've got the special event pack one right here for a little bit of flex. Uh, just a nice card, choking your opponent, building your board really efficiently. Always love to see that in a rookie base deck. From there, we have some utility rookies in the form of four copies of Chikurimon and three copies of Haguramon. I could see myself going back and forth here as which one's the four of, but for now, having the really powerful security bomb of Chikuri just to de-digivolve really annoying Digimon seems super clutch. I was actually in a scenario today against a Reaper player uh, where if they attack with their Reaper before attacking with any of their other Digimon, they would have checked this Chikuri and it would have de-digivolved the Reaper and turned it into a Searcher instead, which which literally would have won me the game. So do not underestimate the power of D Digivolve during your opponent's turn in the form of a Digimon. And then Hagura is a super awesome card because all the D Brigaders are also cyborgs for some reason. You can just use this as a way to plus one while playing a body on board uh, and setting up your trash for Dark Dramon. It's literally a perfect card for this deck. We are playing some level fours in this deck. We have two copies of the blocker Seals Dramon, the last D Brigade that isn't Dark Dramon in our deck, and then two copies of Grumblemon. Uh, basically, Grumblemon's really nice if your opponent has like memory blockers or if you have a abundance of tamers and an abundance of memory gain to get even more extra attacks against your opponent. And then having the Seals Dra as another name slash another way to protect you in case your opponent is being aggressive just like you seems really nice. And again, gotta flex that event pack rare. We have no level fives in this deck. Uh, we are just jumping straight into level sixes with four copies of the Dark Dramon. If I'm honest with you, I kind of don't love this card at four. I was bricking on multiples so many times, but we have cards in this deck that can help you filter your hand efficiently and kind of get rid of dead Dark Dras if you do draw them. And him being a D Brigade slash being like your main win condition that you're setting up for feels like a, a you know important of role that he should be a four of in the deck. Uh, but yeah, Rush, you can play him for three costs at his cheapest. Uh, we do have memory gain in this deck, so you can play him before you have the five total in your trash if you want to. Uh, but honestly, I don't see myself using him if I'm not playing him for three. 
We do have one final Digimon rounding off the entire deck, three copies of Death Exmon. If I had to pick a card from BT9 that is my absolute favorite card to play with, it is Death Exmon. This card feels so broken. I play him for free way more often than I should, and every time he comes down against my opponent, I feel like he single-handedly wins me the game super powerful in this deck you can evolve into him which low-key might be cheaper than playing him sometimes which is kind of funny uh and yeah i just love this card uh, i probably should be playing four because it's that broken but for now three felt pretty good he's not a cyborg or anything so it doesn't really add to the overall strategy of the deck but being able to hard punish your opponent and play a super powerful body for really cheap feels really strong uh from there we have the tamer cards two copies of the bt4 izzy azumi and then three copies of the ex2 kazu shiota uh so izzy he's probably the best mem memory tamer for black period uh so playing two of him makes obvious sense and then three kazu this card's actually really cool being able to start your main phase gain a memory if you have a cyborg or a machine in play which again all of the d brigades are and then all turns when one of your digimon with cyborg or machine becomes suspended doesn't matter how you can rest him or suspend him to draw a card and trash a card so you can filter discard dead cards build your trash for d brigades uh gain memory really awesome card i might try playing a fourth and then finally, the powerhouse option cards. We have three ultimate flare and three iron fist as removal. We have three pride memory boost and two Congo. So I think I can go back and forth here between flare being at four, iron fist being at two, iron fist being at four, ultimate flare being at two, but I always like a nice even slit. Both these cards are super powerful to draw or see in security. So I like them each at three, uh, three pride boost in this deck. This card is either insane or you never draw it. So it doesn't matter, but being able to play this for four and potentially play any of your four cost or less Digimon, which is all of these cards while also having a memory gain later on in the game feels really strong um, basically if you have a choice between hard playing one of these guys or this i'm gonna go for this every single time and finally congo this card's a really nice utility piece for almost any black deck there's a ton of recovery based shenanigans like ofanimon loop security control and the main way you beat those style of decks is you wait and you set up a really powerful burst turn of attacking like four plus times you try to replace any digimon you can if they die and then you end your turn by going congo you can't recover and you can't attack me back hopefully for lethal so on the next turn i'm going to have just as big of a board and i'm going to attack you for that much damage again that's like the main way you try to set up lethal against those recovery based shenanigan decks if i had to think about like possible inclusions for this deck things like the izzy and joe dual tamer do come to mind because a lot of people were building super wide boards against me and having that as like the even more memory gain to help us extend even more as the aggro deck feels really strong but i felt like having death x as a punish to wide boards was good enough so maybe just like maximizing Kazu and making sure you have plenty of ways to be at three memory or higher during your turn is really all you need. And uh, yeah, besides, you know, making uh, four of, of Iron Fist and Ultimate Flare, there's really nothing else you can do with this deck, I think, to maximize its power. It feels really strong, and if you're not prepared for it, it can definitely punish you because every free turn you give this deck is another turn of them punching you in the face, which is kind of awesome.